Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 5 of Attraction Faction. My name is Tyler and this is our look at theme parks and attractions and this week studios. Uh, Katrina's out sick this week. She has uh, a little problem with her throat and she really isn't able to speak very loudly or for very long so she'll we wish well I hope she's gonna get better soon and uh, she'll be back next week um, I hope but uh, anyway this week we're gonna talk about the Walt Disney Studios we got to take a tour of that and we'll take you on the tour we got to uh, check out a lot of that cool stuff over there and we uh, also go to Disneyland Hotel on Sunday so we can get some breakfast at Steakhouse 55. It's the first time we've ever had breakfast there. It was pretty exciting. And we head to Carthy Circle later in the day to get a look at uh, our favorite bartender, Aaron. He's going to make some drinks for us. And then the Tomorrowland uh, preview at the Magic Eye Theater in Disneyland. So... Here we go. We're going to start with the Walt Disney Studios. And uh, we actually got to go because of a D23 uh, event invite. And uh, it was $70 a person, and we ended up uh, doing it. And they had a, a tour guide named Jeffrey who took us around. And uh, they told us once the tour started, no videos. So these are the only videos I have. Uh, just the studio store and things like that. The studio store uh, is a lot like your regular Disney store. It's kind of cool because a lot of the Disney stores you could go to are have a lot of Disney Parks merchandise. This has less Disney Parks merchandise, more just like straight up Disney stuff. So a lot of stuff that actually you might only find online or unless you have a Disney store close to you. Um, that's all you'll find here. So uh, they also have a couple of uh, things that are exclusive to the studios that you can only buy there, uh, and they are all they all have the insignia of the studios and Mickey Mouse, and there's a couple old uh, Mickey cartoon uh, vinyl mations down there. Uh, the I think the shirts are pretty cool, and I almost got a mug, but I've got so many mugs I just refrained from. Uh, doing that along with all the shirts and the bags and whatnot they have uh, little pins that show you the different stages that was stage one which is the Annette Finicella stage I'll talk about it more later um, and this is a watch that actually Katrina got me for our anniversary but uh, you can actually buy this other places besides the studio as you can see it's pretty quiet uh, we've been to other events where it's been crazy so it was nice to just walk around walk around and have it be pretty quiet and uh, not have to worry about other people in the way. This is a Mickey Mouse topiary, and most topiaries in California are, have the mesh on the inside. This one is actually hand carved. It's got a watering system through the middle of it. They only have one topiary. They planned on a million. This one is too hard to keep up. They only have this one. <laughs> uh, this is uh, stage A. They do a lot of uh, sound mixing, sound recording here. Uh, for things like Big Hero 6 is a recent thing that was worked on in this area. Um, uh, they've done a lot of things in the past there. This is the, this is the animation building where uh, the nine old men would have worked. We'll get there in a second. This is the this is a prop from the Reluctant Dragon. Uh, it actually doesn't direct you anywhere, but here's a little cool tidbit that in between, there's actually a restaurant for cast called the In-Between at Disneyland. So there's a little reference there. Uh, and also right below that sign is Pluto's Corner, which I, I think this was also from the Reluctant Dragon, but if you look to the left, it's kind of fun. You can see uh, there's three little f footprints next to the fire hydrant. Next, uh, we're going inside of the animation building. Uh, they didn't let us take pictures on the inside, so unfortunately I'm only going to show you exteriors today. But um, this is where the nine old men worked, like I was saying before, uh, and they worked on a lot of movies, 101 Dalmatians and such at, in this very area. And speaking of 101 Dalmatians, we actually got to see a uh, showing at this theater uh, a couple months ago, and that's where they show a lot of the... That's where, when they were working on things, they would show 
the executives or they would show press, just all sorts of people. Uh, inking and painting is where they would f the animators would do their thing and then the inker inkers and painters would finish up the colors and add uh, all the details to the animation. Um, it, this is just a pretty campus if you ask me. And This is actually, if you've seen Saving Mr. Banks, um, this is where uh, sh this is where she was digging a, tr a hole to put a tr to plant a tree, um, uh, and uh, this is the camera area cutting with the. Uh, this is you know this is all from all relics of the past. I'm not even sure what they do with these buildings anymore. Uh, but this uh, water tower does not it does not hold water anymore. But it used to hold 150,000 gallons, I believe he said. And a hundred of it, it was just for watering plants and toilets and whatnot, but a hundred thousand gallons, I believe, were reserved for fires. So that's crazy to think about. Um, this is the stage, this is our tour guide, Jeffrey, and also a little cute little picture on stage uh, one, the Annette Finicella stage. They used to film things, uh, they built it for fan for segments of Fantasia during World War II. And... Uh, they used it for the Mickey Mouse Club, uh, and they also have a little plaque on the side here, as you can see, to dedicate it. Well, up, coming up in just a second, I'm going to show a close up to dedicate it to Annette Finicella, who was a Musketeer. Um, in Stage Three, where I think they filmed things like uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, they are now filming Master Chef, which is not a Disney show, but we they had the door open and we got a little peek in there. This is again, I filmed this before they told me no filming, so. Anyway, uh, we also got to see the patio that they have uh, that they have in the Master Chef sh Master Chef sh uh, show, and um, this is uh, another stage where they just decided, hey, let's build all the stuff we need onto the side of it. Uh, that was the first stage that they did that for. I thought this was a cute little snack shop. All it is is vending machines. Next, we headed into the Frank G. Wells building. Um, and here they have the Walt Disney Archives. I thought it was really interesting. If you look at these columns, um, they look black and white. They look like marble. But uh, upon closer ex inspection, uh, they're actually full color. Uh, there is no, there's apparently no black in them at all. And it's just to, goes to show you that uh, even uh, things that you would think are very simple have just much color throughout, much much more depth than you would imagine. Throughout this lobby, they had a bunch of different uh, props and things, maquettes. This is from uh, bed knobs and broomsticks. This is uh, different things from uh, different old relics from around the studio that you can see, in just lights they used to use. They had this maquette for Cruella de Vil. Uh, they used to do those things so that they could, um, you know, have a better idea of how they would animate, what it would look like in the animation space. Annette Finicello's hat from the Musketeers. Um, Jack Sparrow's rings, some, uh, another maquette, again, so that they could figure out how exactly Peach Dragon would look. Um, uh, this is Tim the Tool Man Taylor's uh, tool belt, obviously. Binford, I, I totally forgot about Binford until I saw that logo again. Here's the chair from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the organ. And a lot of you probably know that the organ now is actually in uh, Disneyland at the Haunted Mansion. Here's, a, I believe it's Stark's helmet from Tron. It looks so old and haggard at this point. It's funny. And then over in stage two, which is the um, Julie Andrews stage, they built the Mark Twain riverboat and then disassembled it, brought it to Disneyland. Uh, the Julie Andrews stage also, they had things like Dragnet film in there. Mickey, Mo Oh, Mickey Mouse Club also filmed in there, actually. Armageddon. And next up, we headed into the Walt Disney Archives. And they had a lot of nice, um, just old things from movies, just the whole studio's history in here. Just lots of cool things to look at, things that are incredibly rare, things that there's one of a kind. And uh, they had many books, as you can see. And we got to meet the man himself, Dave Smith, the Disney archivist. And he had lots of things to tell us about and, and share. And he tried to sell his books, too, which was fun. But uh, <laughs> So uh, here is a press pass from the very first day Disneyland was open. You had to have a press pass to come in the very first day. They also had a parking pass that was from the first day, and it showed what time you were supposed to be there. And these are very rare because they were glued on to people's cars. So this is a very rare thing. Not many of the left are those at all. 
Here is the first ticket to Disneyland ever bought by Roy Disney. It, it was uh, purchased the very first one. It says number one right on it. Got a stamp right through it. And they also had an Oscar there. I, I apologize. I can't remember exactly what movie this was from. It wasn't uh, anything that everybody's heard of, though, I guarantee. <laughs> it was something um, I can't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. But... Uh, it was interesting because they also he also had these books that this was 25 cents and everybody told Walt Disney that is too cheap for this and he said no don't you get it this is marketing everybody will have one for 25 cents and once everybody has one uh, they'll spread it around put it on their coffee table show it to people and everybody will get excited and as you can see this was actually made before they even had pictures of these things this was all concept art and this is what the maps would look like. This is not even finished product. They're, they just wanted people to get excited. They were getting people pumped. Uh, and then, as you can see, they released another souvenir book once the park was actually open. And uh, they, had, uh, real, they could get real pictures of these things. And I just think what's amazing is just how sparse everything is. If you just look at uh, all the different trees at the Jungle Cruise here and in Adventureland, it's like, wow, you know, they've really grown in now uh, there's it's just much more convincing at this point uh, even at the castle just look at that it's just kind of like looks like it's unfinished you know but it's you know it it's it's it was a really great marketing idea if you ask me it, it turned out really well obviously the company did just fine and they even had a map how to get to Disneyland because you don't know where Disneyland is and you don't even know where Anaheim is so wh what the heck is Anaheim where is that anyway Here's a close-up of uh, the number one ticket by Roy Disney, and also a close-up of the Premier Parking Pass. Um, this was the... It's a little animated bird. This was what inspired animatronics, audio animatronics, to Walt Disney. He built a tiki room after this. Uh, and here's a drawing that you can clearly see that Walt himself worked on. They have him t uh, a picture of him doing it, so he had to do it, right? This is all. This is a case of Walt Disney's things. Uh, he had the number one name tag. He had a business card back there. Um, just pictures of him. He was excited about trains. His glasses, his camera, and apparently his desk is exactly the way it should be. Up, like exactly the way he left it, like upstairs in the animation uh, office, which is crazy to think of. But this is um, just all these old. I think the last time I was at the Disney archives, they had all these, uh, they had like or Donald Duck orange juice uh, things because back in the day, they licensed out all of their Disney stuff to lots of people and and it got crazy. And now the only people that are licensed, that have licensed characters, I believe, are the orange juice people. But anyway, as you can see, just different props, um, different maquettes from Fantasia. And here's an interesting thing. This is uh, how they used to do um, their 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 animation. They used to, when they used to do like zooming shots or whatnot, they used what, uh, what they called the multiplane camera. And you can see it's different layers and it would, uh, they would use the, d they would put the different layers slowly together or take them slowly apart and it would give the look of 3D give more depth to the shot so that's what they were going for with that stuff and uh, they actually ended up getting an academy award for technical achievement i believe so yeah pretty cool this is the team disney building the michael eisner building and this is basically where they have the corporate offices uh they have the seven dwarfs holding up the building because uh that was the they held up the company back when snow white and the seven dwarfs came out and that and they wanted us to, to symbolize that. This uh, building was built by, I believe, Michael Graves, who also designed the Swan and Dolphin, who sadly passed away uh, about a month ago. But um, this is the only partner statue, by the way, that doesn't have a fence or flowers around it. They have this right in the courtyard of the, this is the Legends Plaza, I believe, and they also have the statue of Roy and Minnie. This is at Disney World. You can go and check it out. I believe it's also in Paris. And um, then they also have this statue, which is the Legend statue. And there's a little Easter egg. It's got a hidden mouse, a little, and it's not a Mickey. 
it is a little tiny Gus Gus. I don't know if you can see him up there in the scroll, but I thought it was super cute, so I tried to get the best shot I could. I brightened it up a little bit. Here are So here's all the plaques around the Legends Plaza. This is uh, Randy Newman and Robin Williams, and this is just, you know, for being a great member of the of the Disney family, really. Tony Baxter, he was did all sorts of rides, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, things like that. Anyway, that's the Disney uh, Studios, and uh, I thought these bikes were pretty cute. And now we head over to the Disneyland Hotel to go get some breakfast, the next morning anyway. And uh, I, I don't know if many people notice that this map is here. This is right in the entrance of the Disneyland Hotel. And I just wanted to get some close-ups of it because I think it's really cool. I think the animations are pretty uh, amazing. Uh, well, it's just interesting to look at. You got the Jungle Cruise here. I love the hippo coming out of the water. As, as well as the Schweitzer Falls, the backside of water. And uh, this is, by the way, this I don't know if everybody's noticed, but this is an old representation of Disneyland. This is not the current representation. Uh, we have even the burning the burning log house is, is still there. I wish that house... The, the, the log cabin is still there. It just doesn't burn anymore. But there's even uh, uh, adventures through... I think it's called... I almost said Wonderland, but uh, gosh, I can't... Now I'm blanking on it. I'm sorry. I'm going to put that in the annotations possibly. But anyway, we head over to Steakhouse 55. It's a lot brighter in the morning. You can go back to our last video uh, or one of our previous episodes and see uh, what, that we went for dinner and it was much darker. I, I like the brightness in the morning. It's nice. And uh, uh, it was a, a good atmosphere. It was nice and quiet too. So if you want a quiet breakfast... Um, make some reservations here. Actually, some people walked up about 30 minutes before breakfast was over, and they got in right, uh, pretty much, um, after a little wait. Here's the menu. It's a little bit pricey, uh, but they give you pretty big portions. You will be full by the end of this. Um, I, I, I ended up having the Eggs Benedict, and Katrina ended up having the 2 times 4 and... Um, they also had, uh, so, well, first of all, let me talk about the Eggs Benedict. It was good. It was um, not that much sauce, which is good. As you can see, the um, the ham was nice and thick. It was pretty delicious. The potatoes, if they were just, a, they tasted delicious, but if they were just a little bit crispier, it would have been 100% great. Um, and, you know, they cooked it perfectly. Um, on Katrina's side, they gave her so much food, and those sausages back there are amazing. They're really good sausages, and... and um, I can't recommend them enough. Uh, and they also had a choice of gluten-free pancakes or gluten-free waffles. And uh, she chose the pancakes. And she said she wished she would have gone with the waffles because these were a little bit... They soaked up all the syrup. They didn't have... Uh, they just didn't uh, do do it for her. They didn't... They weren't... Uh, they were kind of powdery. Anyway, next up... I know. It's going kind of quick today. Woo! The Tomorrowland preview at Disneyland. We went to the Magic Eye Theater. I would have to say this is probably the most extensive, um, probably like preview they've ever done, where they have like lots of art here to show you, and uh, they are trying to build up kind of the history of Disney. And I think it's actually, I think this movie is an interesting idea, and I think it's something they're starting to do more and more now, which is kind of go into the meta of Disney, if that makes any sense, which is to say that, like, they're exploring their history, but they're adding fiction to it more. Like, I mean, I would say, like, e even things like Epic Mickey, Saving Mr. Banks, Now Tomorrowland, they all seem like kind of like movies that explore the history of Disney. Oh, well, Epic Mickey is a video game, but, uh, you know... They explore the history of Disneyland, and they are um, adding a little bit of fiction to it. But here is, uh, along with the preview of the movie, which I thought was pretty interesting. I don't want to say too much about it, uh, but uh, here is an. A, a, they put in in the Starcade a exhibit about Tomorrowland, about uh, with a lot of the concept art, with a couple of the costumes. I I think it looks pretty cool. I think it's like a mix between. I don't even know what this reminds me of like Wizard of Oz uh I think it's a mix between like some of the stuff is Guardians of the Galaxy and and Wizard of Oz in a weird way I have I, I don't know um I'm not even sure what that ball thing is but I'm sure it's important and uh here's an astronaut costume for a lady 
these are all things I don't know about, you know what I mean? It's going to be interesting to see what all these things are like in the movie. Uh, I mean, a jetpack man costume. So obviously not a main character or anything, but still. That is a main set piece. Frank's 1964 jetpack, and I am, he, co he, co he goes to bring his invention to... Uh, this to the fair, and I imagine these are all other inventions that he was up against. Um, this is a countdown clock, famous from the trailer. I've seen it uh, behind George Clooney. I'm not really sure what it's counting down to. I'm sure we'll find out together when we see the movie. Lots of strange weapons and gear and stuff, and pictures of small world. And uh, so, yeah, it's just a weird mix of like stuff i just feel like it's a weird mix of like here's some history of disneyland uh as well as i wonder if walt disney's in this movie at all uh, you know sorry to just change gears real quick but i yeah i just really quickly wonder if walt disney's in this movie like you know obviously it wouldn't be him anyway next headed over to uh carthay circle our friend aaron he was in a disneyland parks uh video recently and here he is showing us how he's demonstrating how they do the spheres um, out of, made out of ice. And this is a this is not heated. It is not hot. It is not like motorized or anything like that. It is literally just operating on gravity. And it's I I believe I want to say it's like aluminum. I don't know what kind of I'm be lying if I told you what kind of metal it was. But what it does is it sucks all of the um, coldness out of the ice. I guess and very quickly makes this sphere and it's all just like a chemical reaction from the ice touching this metal it's really interesting and i think he's making i think he makes they usually make manhattans with these uh i think he made a martini uh this time with some olives and here we go i sped it up just a tiny bit uh, i i passed it just a little bit and here you go here's the finished product and it's like beautiful too like look at that i think it's magnificent and um, so he puts a couple squirts of that junk in there I wish I knew what it was sorry everybody and uh, then voila martini puts puts a few olives I think he said they were garlic stuffed olives they have all sorts of really nice like um, garnishes here they have like candied flowers they have um, like onion like uh, little pearl onions that are in uh, that are like pickled but uh yeah so that's gonna do it for this week's episode of attraction faction thank you so much for joining me katrina will be back next week uh and we'll talk about more stuff in the world of theme parks if you wouldn't mind please click to subscribe to us here on youtube like us on facebook uh follow us on tumblr it all means a lot to us it really does and i uh we're having fun doing it we're working hard and we hope that you guys enjoy the show. Uh, just please let us know. It really means a lot to us if you leave a like even. Uh, it's very helpful. So until next week, have a good one.